With that, we'll move on now, and I'll call to order the Village of Riverside Board of Trustees regular meeting for Thursday, June 4th, 2020. The time is 722, and this is immediately following the public hearings for the Harlem Business, Business District number two and Ogden, Ogden Harlem Business District number three. Please call the roll. President Sells. Here. Trustee Hannon. Here. Trustee Peters. Here. Trustee Pollock. Here. Trustee Evans. Here. Trustee Galagos. Here. Trustee Deza. Here. Village Manager Francis. Here. Village Attorney Mars. Here. Thank Community you, Development Director Ask. Here. Also present Village Clerk Haley. Thank you very much. If you're here with us, if you'll please join us with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. I, I know that we have um, several people outside who are interested in speaking on an agenda item that's that's later on in the the meeting so if, if i think they're all watching the monitor out there you're welcome to make your comments now if you wish uh, or if you'd like to wait until we actually get to the agenda item you you can then make your comments at that time so if anyone would like to make a com public comment at this time uh, please let that be known to mr buckley who's out there with you Sorry to interject for President Sells. Could I get that light killed? The projector light? Thank you. <laughs> uh, good, good evening, evening everyone. Sir. I'm John Plunkett. Uh, my family's lived at 107 Pine Avenue for the uh, past 28 years this very month. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to come here tonight and share my views. And this is my very first public outing. I've avoided them like the plague due to COVID-19. I'm 78 years old and right in the wheelhouse that COVID-19 deals with, I guess. I broke down and came here this evening because of the importance of this particular driveway issue to my family. Um, my wife and I are both retired. We're living on fixed incomes. And we do try to make uh, improvements to the home whenever we can. We have a permit right now, as a matter of fact, uh, that next week allows us to do a demolition on an old garage and replace it with a new one at quite an expense by the time it's done. And so we're not, a, not opposed to improving the property, that's for sure. Um, while I haven't gotten a quote, I know that uh, in order to reach our garage from the sidewalk, it's about 200 feet. Uh, so I know that a, a, a paved driveway would be very expensive. Pavers would probably be even more expensive. And we're just strongly opposed to putting in blacktop and pouring petroleum products on the driveway that have to be maintained um, every bit as much as gravel driveways. While um, in looking at this issue, it, it seems to me that while only one third of 1% of all the residents of Riverside will endure the costs in, involved in replacing driveways, and that's true whether we do it right now or whether we do it at the time of sale and have to back down on the price in order to allow the new buyer to uh, make that improvement right off the bat. So, the costs are roughly the same, the, no matter which way we go with that. Um, and, the, and the thing that complicates that whole issue even more with me, over and above the expenses, uh, is that I don't see that there's really any positive, uh, uh, any positive impact in promoting public health, public safety, comfort, convenience, and the general welfare of the village nor do I see there's 
any relative gain uh, to the public as compared to the hardship imposed on 35 families. Um, so for these reasons, basically, I strongly encourage um, the board to finally put this matter to bed and vote to grandfather in the existing gravel driveways and provide clear maintenance standards and then hold us to those maintenance standards. I, I think people would be more than happy to comply with that. Um, so unless you have questions, I'm going to take off, get out of here, and get home to <laughs> safety on 107 Pine Ave. We appreciate you coming in and sharing your thoughts with us, Mr. Plunkett. Well, we really, our family recognizes the time all of you put in uh, for free on behalf of all of us. So thank you very much. For That's that very time. kind. Thank you, sir. Good night. Stay well. Thank you. Hello, Mad Kohanek, 99 Grove one, with my wife, Claudia. Um, I hope all is well with everyone. Uh, I took a walk from 99 Grove one to, uh, to the township. Uh, it's a very nice walk, a perfect evening. Uh, as I walked, uh, you start looking at where gravel is. And there's a new owner of a place, five buildings south of us, which installed a new gravel driveway. Very nice, very bright, very new, uh, very brilliant. Uh, I would assume that Riverside had a lot of gravel years ago when it was founded and these buildings were put in. As I proceeded, I passed the bridge, which uh, is where Martan put their coffer dam and put gravel underneath the bridge with a wire netting. And that also was the time in 2013 when we flooded as a result of the blockage of the complete river flow. Uh, as I did drive or uh, walk here, there was another older driveway, uh, probably uh, that's been there for a long time. I crossed the Burlington Railroad tracks. Their track is supported by gravel or what they call ballast. So then you can start looking around and seeing that there's a lot of gravel that's visible in Riverside. I recycle, I take my electronics to the recycling place. Uh, there, that street has no curbs. All the aprons are gravel. Uh, I believe even where Riverside utility trucks go in has a gravel driveway. So uh, my point is, is that there's a lot of gravel in Riverside that over time probably most of it's gonna wind up disappearing. Uh, my concern, uh, and there's also Swamp Pond that has the gravel pathway. There's uh, um, Indian Gardens that has a gravel parking area. Uh, so I, if I'm guilty with my gravel parking area, so is Riverside. But the concern that I think you all have is porosity. That gravel does not allow water to pass through. And that just doesn't ring true to me. So what I did, and videos were sent, to Sonia Act, the Community Developer, Developmental Director, and I took water, I filmed it, and I spilled the water on my parking area, and instead of it pooling into a puddle or draining off, it went through the gravel. So then I went to the new owners 
introduced myself, spoke to a very nice young lady, very sharp, very articulate, and I said, do you mind if I spill water on your brand new driveway, which has bigger rocks? And she said, fine, I'm aware I've been, uh, I'm in non-compliance also. Filming it, water seeped through, uh, so there is porosity through the gravel. Then, I know that Riverside had put in nice paving stones with certain, certain drainage capabilities in their parking uh, area in downtown Riverside, and I filmed that, and yes, that drains nicely too. When you look at my building from the street, I have a cement driveway. In the back of the building, we have a common alley that services both Lincoln and Groveland. On the Lincoln side are large apartment buildings that accommodate maybe 30 units. Um, and so when my parents were alive, people were approaching them. The manager of these buildings were saying, we need parking spaces. You have two empty lots, unbuilt, which is north of our building. Can you put some gravel down so there's more parking areas? I, at the time, wasn't living in that building, and they did it before I came home. It was all done and set. I would prefer not to, but people are just begging us and today, it still looks and is even like it was when it was put in. When I look at some of the neighbors' uh, asphalt driveways and aprons, there's cracks, there's holes. Uh, I kind of avoid going on that side because at my age, I don't need to fall anymore. So my point, and then that's all I need to say, is that the studies that you keep on citing that gravel is, has no porosity to it, that it's as maybe as impermeable close to cement just isn't the case. The parking is a necessity. Years ago, the big apartment complexes that had one line of cars for parking and then a grass space next to the building, they took out that grass space, I guess I would think with the village permission, because I'm sure a permit needed to be pulled, and now the entire back of the building is all asphalt. So what is done is done. That's, there still isn't enough parking. I'm sure that all the parking spaces on Park Place, uh, where the village rents parking spaces, are all full. I never see empties. People are begging to get a spot there, and that's limited. What we charge for a parking space is what we charge 30 years ago. Not the increases that the village is probably charging right now. So, and that's probably why we never find out if there's a new tenant coming in, because it's just passed to the new tenant uh, in one of these apartment complexes. So that's my point. You can do what you want. You, there's reasons why you might want to change things. But don't tell me that Gravel does not absorb uh, and allow water to pass through to the earth. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to be quick. Please. Okay. Um, 
Since we, Groveland, Lincoln, and Kimbar, we are the flooding streets. Since the gravel on the, wherever it is on those streets helps with the porosity of the rain and not for us to flood. I think that we all should be grandfathered in so that we do not have to change it because we have flooded, and when we flood in our lower level with, because the lots have not been built on, I get four and a half feet of water in my home. So if you have a kind heart, leave the gravel alone on those streets. At least something can go through instead of, I mean, our street looked like, like a pond. So this is why I am asking for that. Grandfather of sin, it's been that way for 60 years. You know, do the new people who are coming in, but leave us alone. We've gone through enough heartache. And with that one point, and then I'm done. Uh, the river has never gotten this high two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, since we've been flooded, because normally we get inundated by the adjacent lots. This time we didn't get inundated, so the height of the river even went higher. Uh, but we opened the locks that helped us. No, when the fire department comes to notify that there's the possibility that we may have to evacuate, uh, Claudia w uh, went down to where they were standing at the end of the road to check the bridge. That's how we measure how high the uh, water is getting. And she asked the firemen, have you opened up the locks yet? When the locks had helped. And, and with no he damage. said, the firemen said no. And she said that I flooded up to this high three times while living in With this no area. Locks open. And if you open up the locks, the river may not crust as high. Within an hour, thank God for these firemen, apparently they did call because the water which was just flowing down the river took off like a racehorse. You could tell that there was an immediate difference, and we attributed that to the opening of the locks. I'm a resident there. I don't really need to be quick on the draw that way, but I'm trying to save my house. Riverside should also have somebody on duty to say, you know, last time they opened up the locks and we, they didn't flood. That's something we have to always make sure in every crisis. Thank you very much. I hope you all Thank stay you. well. Thank you very much. You too. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Hi, my name is Georgia Albertson. I had sent my notes in. I don't know if you people have read them or not, but. I'd like to say a few things, if you don't mind. The true charm of our village is that every street contains houses of different styles, colors, and material. It's one of those things that make us so special. We work very hard to preserve our uniqueness. I think that the gravel driveways contribute to that. Why not? Okay. Drive into District 1, and it's like going back into time. Many of those houses all started with gravel. There's one particular yellow house that still has a gravel driveway. And frankly, I believe that that's what kind of makes it extra special. Change would erase, any change would erase that. History would be gone. Okay. I met a couple who live in a house that her husband's, that the husband's grandfather built here in Riverside. The plan is that someday their son and his family will live in that house. It's had a, had a gravel driveway from the day of construction. That would be four generations that have lived with the gravel driveway. 
I think that's a kind of a remarkable family history and a legacy. And this would erase that. And that, I don't think that's fair. We bought our house 53 years ago with a gravel driveway. We have made changes through the years, but never thought about changing the driveway. It does the job, it is unique, and we like that. Gravel hard driveways are, it's hard to clear the snow, and there's work to be done on them, you know, to maintain them. But it's always worked well for us. And I just don't want to have, have to see that replaced with the, you know, blacktop. It just strikes me as foolish. Most of the driveways are owned by seniors. This is an expense we cannot afford, and the idea of making it so that the next owner, after we sell or die, uh, would have to then, you know, put in the driveway within a year, that'll still cost us, because somebody, if I go to sell my house, and this is in there, you gotta put a driveway in, the money I'm gonna get for that house is gone. I've been retired for 13 years now. Uh, we're making it, we're fine, but this will just kill us. And many of the people that I talk to in some of these other meetings, it's the same thing. And some of the others are older than I am, and they've just, they, it's hard to deal with this. It really is. This is an expense a lot of people, in, in the first meeting they said, well, it's $15,000. Somebody said, okay, $15,000, then you have to hire an engineer and all that, and that depends on the length of your driveway. You know, maybe it's 15,000 from here to there. I got a drive that's like 100 feet. I can't even imagine what that would cost. So they're throwing out, you know, well, this is what it's gonna cost. They have no idea. I mean, it's foolish. And this thing with the water, what those people said is true. All, the, you know, the gravel doesn't absorb the water. Yes, it does. So sometimes the facts that you're given, I don't think are actually true. In the, since this happened, one of the things I did is I traveled through town to check out other driveways. And the interesting thing that I found is not, you know, is not only the, uh, the gravel driveways, but there's a lot of cement and blacktop driveways that really need some work. So if you're done with us, are you then going to go after blacktop and cement driveways? Would that be the next step? I mean, you really have to think about this. Simply put, this is putting a burden on senior citizens that we, we really can't handle. And it, it's putting a lot of stress on us at this time of our life. I really don't think it's fair. I honestly don't think it was thought through because when they talked about the 15,000, it was like it was chunk change. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not chunk change. So I guess that's probably the end of it. I, my last, and one other question I do have, have any other towns done this? Is there any precedent for this? Not that I'm aware of. Why are we, you know, the first to be doing this? I, I'd really like to understand it. This, I've been in this village long enough this is reminding me of turtle wars on Long Common with the park, literally. Uh, <laughs> we don't want to go down that road. <clears throat> Let's not lose what makes us special, a mixture of styles, a loving appreciation of the past, and a love for our uniqueness. We are different. Let's celebrate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming this evening. We appreciate it. Mike Tomasek, uh, 56 Pine. Uh, let's see. Uh, I want to uh, just say a couple of things uh, that I did not see and that were cl to be clear, maybe clarify what was in the agenda items. Um, I'm talking about the exist existing uh, <coughs> gravel driveway, and I have one of those. Uh, I, I agree that. Uh, if you want the, the standard to be for new development or for um, uh, a significant capital improvement to go to non-gravel if you want to go it that way, but uh, 
the, the subject I'm interested in is what do you do with the, the existing ones, the, the 35? And, uh, and that's kind of like, okay, so, uh, I, I, and that's otherwise known as, well, I think it was grandfathered. Uh, that, that's the approach that we were told, my wife reminded me, and she remembers, she has a very good memory, and she said in 05, 08, when the, this was brought up by the village, don't worry your grandfather. Okay, and we discovered in the December meeting with the Planning and Zone Commission, uh, when other more people came in uh, pre-COVID, uh, they all had a sim people also had a similar. This is what they heard, and uh, I just want to cl clarify that that was uh, the gist of what we were we were told. But whether it was in uh, seven dot stroke B paragraph C, I'm not sure, but. Uh, Indications that that uh, that the, we were grandfathered, where that we did not try to do the work uh, to pave. Uh, we didn't get the po we didn't actively oppose oppose the village because they said we didn't need it was okay, and the village didn't come after us. So those are indications of that we were grandfathered, and 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 also uh, what this grandfather approach is really what our peer municipalities. Uh, we found out by the good work uh, by the staff over here in page 100 uh, of, the, of the attachments here. Uh, we, we found that none of, they all grandfather. Uh, they have no compliance requirement uh, to, uh, to, to adhere to the, to the it, it, all of them uh, do not want gravel as their, as their standard. However, for, they all treated uh, uh, existing uh, driveways is the grandfather. And so why did our village talk that way in 0508, and what, which is similar to uh, Brookfield, River Forest, Hinsdale, uh, LaGrange, Grange Park, Western Springs, is, is because uh, it's a reasonable thing to do for, they knew that it was a, a significant outlay for uh, the, their, the property owners uh, kind of coming out of the blue and it would be uh, not equitable. Uh, you're not asking everyone in the, in the, uh, in the village to, to uh, for that kind of an assessment. And, uh, and, it's, and it's not for any kind of a uh, health uh, issue or safety issue. Uh, I guess it's aesthetics. On that subject, I actually did the field trip. I looked at all 35 uh, for a bike ride and uh, just tell them about this. Like, hey, don't forget about this, you know. And uh, and and I, one thing that struck me in, in my field trip is that, uh, from an aesthetic point of view, none of them it, the, the gravel driveways did not stick out like a sore thumb. It wasn't an aesthetic blot. Blot. Uh, so if that's the driver, it, it's false. And and I, the other thing I, I saw that, except for a couple, uh, they were in good repair. And uh, it was far uh, more uh, proportionally for like blacktop and concrete were really poor repair, like moonscapes sometimes. And uh, so a little side notion, side comment. So, uh, uh, and I also want to say that it is it's, it's significantly costly to do this. Uh, it's not like uh, replacing peeling paint by getting like four gallons of paint or something, which is a, a, a you know a kind of a classic uh, village uh, uh, standard uh, ordinance that we all. And it's not that big. Of, it's not a problem for anyone, but in this case, it's many thousands of dollars that uh, I'm on a fixed income. A lot of other people are. It would sometimes you might even have to sell. So it's almost a de facto. We, eviction, but, uh, and then I talked about the lack of equitability, and uh, our peer municipalities, got that, and uh, that uh, I kind of, I saw one statement in, in, in the materials, Chairman, Chairperson uh, Mateo from the Planning and Zone said, she thought that it's no better or worse functionally as concrete or asphalt, so she did not see a compelling reason to require them to be replaced. He was in favor of allowing existing gravel driveways to be grandfathered, provided they were maintained. So I would agree with that point of view. 
uh, then, and I, I could maybe talk another 10 pages, but, uh, and then, then, I, then I was just going to, I was going to say, rain, and then just walk away. Or I could have said, COVID-19, and walk away. Bloomberg came out with a report today, like millions of jobs are, are gone and can't, you know, they have trouble clawing its way back. Uh, something like this, which is, again, not, the, uh, it's not really good for the, the public good even. It's certainly marginal at best. Uh, it's kind of going in the wrong direction. And uh, for, uh, in this severe economic, however, you don't need the, the severe economic straits to, uh, to, to justify a grandfather. Uh, it's the other reasons I said. And rain is, is, is important. I mean, it's like, you know, we got a reminder here, you know, for an argument. Uh, what we just saw recently, which of course is not the first time we've seen this, uh, this, this amount of precipitation and the havoc it, it, it wreaked on our, our town. And, and uh, so it's in everyone's mind, uh, rain management and retention, and uh, that's, that's a big thing. So it seems a little odd, almost nonsensical, that we were, that the village is considering, you know, for these poor 30 people to uh, make it in, into uh, a, a a fossil fuel-based, uh, non-porous uh, substrate. Uh, it's going in the wrong direction. And, uh, and I would agree with that other person about that. Uh, I know that I think in the state, in, in, in the uh, materials here, I think the Metropolitan Reclamation District define, doesn't define a uh, gravel driveway as, as a porous substrate, but maybe they have special criteria for that, you know, but I know in seeing, uh, rain in my driveway, you know, it doesn't go down the same rate uh, as uh, concrete driveways do. And I remember I did talk to a couple of contractors to see the damages that are potential here, but it's significant. Uh, uh, and there's other complications too, but I'll get to that. Uh, uh, he, uh, his, th th more than a couple of couple them said the same joke. We, we want to give back to the village. We want to make sure the village gets all the water. That's, that was their joke. It's a, a concrete contractor's joke. Make sure we get the village. And Mr. Salas and everybody here uh, know about all the load on the main. And I saw his comments in, 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 in the exchanges and stuff and the e flashes and, you know, like trying to watch out for, you know, putting the extra load onto the, to our main. And, and uh, so it's not quite a joking matter. So it, it, anyway, it's touched, this, this subject touches on something that is only happening with greater frequency, as we know. And it's, I, and I, and I, and I, I would, uh, uh, while it might not be the same as uh, uh, other kinds of substrates, uh, we, my, it, 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 it absorbs a little bit. I just want to make that clear. And it kind of makes sense. Maybe uh, the Metropolitan Reclamation District has a special criteria. I think that was the biggest points. Okay. I appreciate you guys uh, doing the work of the village business in these times. And I think I got most of the stuff on. And so, yeah, grandfather is uh, what we were uh, told, uh, whether it got into uh, the code, I'm not sure, but, uh, or if it did, it was unclear, but that was what was, uh, and that's what we're seeking. Yeah, I did allude to complexity. I have a shared driveway. Some of the driveways are dedicated, some are shared. And I have a shared driveway with Ken. I mean, and it, it's just, it's complicated to, to do that. One person, you know, if you're going to do it at the time of sale, one person wants to do it, but can't, and the other one and has good head. It's 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 definitely complicated. It has to do with the width of how I, I learned this in talking to a contractor. Uh, there's a special machine they have for paver, pavement, uh, uh, blacktop, and, and it has a certain number of width and it. it, it it's also a significant thing whether how much margin we have from the house and and uh, 
uh, that'll determine whether the machine could fit actually if, if we're just trying to do it half of it. And he thought it couldn't, so I would need special consideration for my neighbor. And I don't know about his schedule, about his means, etc. So that's another reason for maybe grandfathering, like the other villages do, and like how I think it was originally uh, communicated. And, and I, I, I think that the lady uh, brought it up too. Uh, basic, you might say, uh, I mentioned equity, but it's uh, just uh, being neighborly, I guess is what, what I'm guessing all those villages that I just cited at uh, 0508, uh, administrations over here understood they didn't want to go and smack someone with a twenty thousand dollar assessment, and uh, just after they're just they're just you know having enough trouble just paying the bills. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Thanks. I think that's a, thanks for hearing me out. You're very welcome. Thank you for coming. Stay safe. Sixty Pine Avenue, Riverside. Uh, our family has been there for 55 years, and uh, we uh, always try to maintain the, the property and, and make it as nice as possible for the rest of Riverside to enjoy. But uh, I just want to say that uh, I'm on Social Security Disability. I've had five surgeries on my legs and a stroke last last year. I'm on a fixed income and there's, I just want to say that it's financially impossible for me to pave my driveway. Um, I, and also, if I sell the house and go to an assisted living community, uh, the value of the house goes down because the next person has to incur that cost. I looked into the cost of it my driver is $15,000, which I find that hardly nominal. And, uh, and I cannot budget for it since I'm on a fixed income and everything I make goes to uh, the well-being of the house. In the meantime, um, I thank you very much for your time and that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carpez. Please be well. That's it. Okay. So that's all the folks that we had here for public comments. So we'll move on now to the reports of village officers. First up is the village president's report. Uh, I just wanted to say a few words about what we've all been through uh, the past several days with the threat of violence that we experienced from surrounding communities, the looting, the gang activity. The, our village staff and especially our police, fire and public works departments responded beautifully and professionally and with great professionalism to make sure that we all stayed safe. They mobilized their units and were faced with the dual task of not only protecting us, but also helping our surrounding communities as they responded to much more dire circumstances that thank God we did not experience here. So. My heartfelt thanks, and I know I speak for everybody on the village board, goes out to them. And also our businesses who, without batting an eye, closed their doors, incurring loss on top of loss that they've already incurred, simply to keep us safe. And they did it because, as always, they put the interest and the well-being of our residents first. And then lastly, our residents who responded uh, well to the village's request to stay home, that request and your response took a lot of pressure off of the first responders who were already stretched very thin. I'm glad to say that the, the violence has subsided. We can only hope that it stays that way. But uh, my, my thanks to everyone involved for really what was a village-wide effort and taking care of one another. It was a, a very inspiring thing to see. 
Earlier today, the Village of Riverside Board of Trustees released uh, the following statement that I would like to read. The Village of Riverside is saddened and angered by the horrific death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. We extend our deepest condolences to his family and to those in the Minneapolis community struggling to deal with its aftermath. This heartbreaking act has rightly sparked legitimate protest across our nation about the need to address systemic racism and the historic vestiges of inequality and racial injustice. We support the fight against racism and the peaceful protest striving to bring awareness to this critical issue. The tragic list of names to which Mr. Floyd now belongs must end. In the midst of this tragedy, we must seize the opportunity for constructive dialogue to assure that Mr. Floyd did not die in vain. We will not be able to heal the wounds of our national spirit until we put an end to the cause of our suffering. Unconscionable acts born of ignorance and hate and sustained by apathy and indifference. The village of Riverside works tirelessly to build trust and respectful relationships within our village. Our police department receives constant training on de-escalation, mental health, social justice issues, and other issues around restorative justice. The actions of the officers involved in Mr. Floyd's death are anathema to the noble call to protect and serve. The Village of Riverside is committed to cult cultural outreach and transparency. We strive to be a community of diversity, welcoming all who want to be part of our community. We will steadfastly reject calls that would divide us or breathe clouds of hate into our village. As we struggle to respond to the enormous losses suffered in Minneapolis and other cities across the country, we must rededicate ourselves to answering the call of our better angels. We will only heal when we have a nation where all people are duly blessed with the opportunities and protections of justice and equality. And that is behalf, on behalf of myself and the Village Board of Trustees. I would also like to note that in future meeting, Chief Weitzel is going to address the board and the residents with regard to uh, training that is provided to our police department on a range of issues, as well as the efforts that we have made over many years to make sure that we are at the forefront of good policing practices. So that will be coming up in the near future. And also later this summer, uh, when, and we are working out the details of this now, uh, we are going to have an opportunity to have a direct public dialogue with our residents on the issues that have been raised by the tragic death of Mr. Floyd. God bless him and God bless his family and to all those still struggling to get the country that we all deserve. Thank you. Next up is the appointment of various commissioners and board members. We have quite a few this evening, so please bear with me. And at the end of this, I'd ask for a motion and a second to make these appointments. Mr. Greg Gorski for chair of Riverside TV, term to expire 2021. Bridget Doherty to the Economic Development Commission, term to expire 2023. Jennifer Fournier, EDC, term to expire 2023, and the chair term to expire 2021 and Amy Jaksik, also EDC, term to expire 2023. For the Historical Commission, Diane Sergioli, term to expire 2023, Constance Guardi, term to expire 2023, and chair term to expire 2021, Jim James Petrozilka, term to expire 2023. For the Landscape <coughs> Advisory Commission, Lisa Lambros, term to expire 2023, Kathy Maloney, Chair, term to expire 2021. Mary Plunkett, term to expire 2023. And Julie Chaff, term to expire 2023. For the Planning and Zoning Commission, Jennifer Hanahan, term to expire 2025. Jill Mateo, Chair, term to expire 2021. And Teresa Pelletier, term to expire 2025. For the Preservation Commission, Michael Leary, term to expire 2023, and Charles Pipel, 
Chair, term to expire 2021. For Parks and Recreation Board, Elizabeth Koss, Chair, term to expire 2021, term to expire 2023. And lastly, for the Police Pension Board, Georgine Poulos, term to expire 2023. I would ask for a motion and a second to approve these appointments. I'll make a motion to approve those appointments. Motion by Mr. Pollock. I'll second. Second by Ms. Peters. Any discussion? I greatly appreciate all these folks being willing to be reappointed. They do wonderful work on behalf of our, our community. If you're wondering why there are so many all at once, it's because the terms of our commissions expire on 20, on, in June of, uh, of, the, of a given year. So that's why we have so many at, at once this evening. So with that, Ms. Haley, if you'll please call the roll. Trustee Hanna. Aye. Trustee Peters. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Trustee Evans. Aye. <clears throat> Trustee Gallagher. Aye. Trustee Fisa. Aye. The motion carries. Thank you very much. That's all I have for this evening. Manager Francis, uh, it's your turn for the manager's report. I have a couple of items to report to the village board. One is an update with regard to the ordinance that was approved last uh, at our last meeting, which is an ordinance approving temporary uses of village right of way and other public and private spaces for outdoor dining and other authorized purposes and approving certain temporary, um, which approved the use of several public areas for our outdoor dining spaces. With regard to that, um, I have the authority to approve additional requests, but I do have to report back those requests to the village board at the following meeting. After that meeting on May 27th, Aunt Diana's requested the designation of a parking space in front of their store to be designated as a 15 minute parking space for curbside pickup. And that request was approved on Friday, May 29th, 2020. The other item that I have to report is um, for residence purposes, um, due to the economic impact of COVID-19, Riverside on Riverside residents, the village has delayed the due date for vehicle sticker and pet licenses renewal until July 31st, and that was approved by the board previously. Um, residents should expect their renewal form in mid-June. To ensure the safety of our residents and staff, renewals will not be processed over the counter this year. Residents will be able to pay online or drop off payment in our silver drop box located outside the village hall. Once we receive the paperwork for those vehicle stickers and pet licenses, um, we will process those and uh, tags and the licenses will be mailed back to residents. That is it for my report this evening. Thank you very much. We'll move on now to the approval of the consent agenda. On the agenda this evening, approve the voucher list of bills June 4, 2020. Approve the Village Board of Trustee regular meeting minutes of May 21, 2020. Approve the Village Board of Trustees special meeting minutes of May 27, 2020. Review and file the Historical Commission meeting minutes of February 17, the Landscape Advisory Commission meeting minutes of March 10, the Police Pension Board meetings of April 22, that one is 2019 and the Police Pension Board meeting minutes of April 21, 2020. And lastly on the agenda, a resolution to approve an amendment to the village administered section 457 deferred compensation plan pursuant to the CARES Act. Does anyone need anything removed for discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask for a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. So we'll motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Pollock. I'll second. Second by Mr. Hannon. Please call the roll. Trustee Hannon. Aye. Trustee Peters. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Gallagher. Aye. Trustee Fisa. Aye. Motion carries. Next up are reports of departments, commissions, and trustee liaisons. Does anyone have a trustee liaison report this evening? 
Hearing none, we'll move on to ordinances and resolutions. First up is an ordinance amending various sections of the Village of Riverside zoning ordinance relative to gravel driveways. And this is an item continued from March 19th, 2020. Director Apt. Yes, um, a brief update. Uh, this began with a gravel driveway variation uh, for two properties on Berry Point. Um, at that time, the Planning and Zoning Commission noted that the code provisions that are currently in our ordinance for gravel driveways were ambiguous, confusing, and unclear. And as part of their recommendation regarding that variance, um, they recommended that the village board um, consider uh, code amendments that would clarify the code and make it explicit relative to the ability to maintain a gravel driveway going forward. Uh, the village board considered this recommendation and tabled discussion of the gravel driveway variance for staff and the village attorney to prepare a draft text amendment and take it through the approval process. So um, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing on December 16th and made a recommendation to the village board uh, that would make certain changes, and these include uh, allowing existing, gra existing gravel driveways to remain until the property is sold, <coughs> to require the gravel driveways to be replaced with an approved driveway material within one year of the sale of the property, to require existing gravel driveways to be maintained to the existing maintenance standards, and to revise the current maintenance standards to only require edging for decorative pea gravel driveways. Um, this came back before you then. And uh, the village board remanded the text amendment back to the Planning and Zoning Commission to consider additional topics. These included discussing allowing decorative pea gravel driveways for non-landmarked properties, listing additional pervious pavement options to reflect the village's preference for permeable materials, and to evaluate the pros and cons of allowing crushed gravel driveways. Additionally, the Board of Trustees directed staff to verify the number of gravel driveways to determine the actual impact of the code change. So uh, this went back to the Planning and Zoning Commission again to discuss those remanded issues on February 26th. Um, at the Board's direction, staff did survey the entire community and did find a few additionally affected properties. These were primarily parking pads or garage aprons located adjacent to alleys in the village. Um, it also included a gravel area between two adjacent driveways. Um, so there are now a total of 35 gravel driveways or parking pads. And we had previously identified 29 properties. It should be noted that the village does have a few gravel public alleys. Um, this includes um, on either side of north the properties on Northgate Court, as well as um, behind Kent Road. Additionally, the accesses to Scout Cabin and Indian Gardens have gravel access drives and or parking areas. Um, Plan uh, Planning and Zoning Commission was provided with a list of pros and cons for gravels driveways, standards for permeable pea gravel driveways, and a list of other types of decorative gravel that could be considered permeable, as well as a list of other types of permeable pavement that could be added to the permitted materials list. The Planning and Zoning Commission discussed each of these items and had the following additional comments or recommendations um, on the remanded items that you sent to them. Um, those are in um, a separate findings of fact that's included in your packet, but I'll go through them really quick right now. As for the non-landmark properties having pea gravel driveways, the commissioners recommended allowing permeable pea gravel driveways or other similar decorative gravel driveways for non-landmark properties. Um, they recommended using our engineer's recommended standards. Um, for adding additional permeable um, pavement list into the lists. Uh, the commissioners recommended adding the materials listed by staff to the approved materials list in the code. This included permeable pavers, pea gravel, permeable concrete, porous asphalt, grasscrete, or other similar void structures. And in evaluating the pros and cons of allowing crushed gravel driveways and whether they should be required to be replaced at the time property is sold or simply grandfathered, the commissioners um, were split in their recommendation. Two commissioners did not believe the pros provided sufficient reason to change their previous recommendation of replacing the driveway at the time the property is sold. Two commissioners believe that the cons were not sufficient enough to show that gravel was significantly worse than concrete or asphalt, provided that the driveway was properly maintained. They recommended grandfathering the existing gravel driveways, but requiring that they be maintained weed-free, no bare spots, uniform layer of gravel evenly distributed. Um, 
And then as to whether the six additional identified gravel driveways impact how the issue of nonconformity should be viewed and any hardship imposed upon affected properties, the commissioners did not believe that the additional six properties had any impact on their present or previous discussions or findings and recommendations. Uh, the commissioners did discuss adding the gravel driveway maintenance and construction standards to the building code rather than having them housed in the zoning code. So that was an additional comment they had was that perhaps that's something that should be housed in a different area and then just referenced by the zoning code. Um, at this time, based on the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation on those additional issues, um, we are asking uh, direction from the board on what to include in the ordinance um, adopting the text amendments. So the draft that you have before you is the original draft from their original recommendation that was before you back in January. Um, so based on the commission's recommendations, we're looking for some direction on how you would like us to revise that particular ordinance in regards to those matters. Thank you very much. So tonight, uh, staff is just asking for a direction so that we got, are not in need of any motion or second at this time. So let's just go through them one at a time. The, the first question that was uh, that we remanded back to the Planning and Zoning Commission was, should decorative P gravel driveways be permitted on non-landmark properties? Currently, they are only allowed on landmark properties. The commissioners recommended allowing permeable P, P gravel driveways or other similar decorative, decorative gravel driveways for non-landmark purposes. And they recommend using the engineer's recommended standards. So trustees, what do you think about their recommendation? I'm in agreement with their recommendation. I am in agreement with that recommendation as well. I see you Trustee too. Evans shaking her yes. head. She's out of range of the microphone. Mr. Hanna? Uh, the one question I had looking at the summary, um, you know, pea gravel, I understand. Uh, porous asphalt, is, is that different than regular asphalt, or what, what are we looking yes, for it's, there? It, okay. It's a different material than your typical asphalt. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, expanding pea gravel um, to, to non-historic areas makes a lot of sense. Mr. Galagos and Mr. Giso, what do you think about this first item? Trustee Galagos would also like to see pea gravel on non-historic properties. Mr. Giso? Uh, pea gravel as well. Thank you very much. So we'll move on to the next question. Should additional pervious pavement options be added to the list of permitted driveway materials to reflect the village's preference for permeable materials? And if so, what are those options? The commissioners recommended adding the materials listed by staff to the approved materials list, and these include permeable pavers, pea gravel, permeable concrete, porous asphalt, grasscrete, or similar void structures. Trustees? I jumped the gun on porous asphalt. Um, yeah, I, I like the expansion. I think that makes a lot of sense. I, I think I don't. I'm not a materials person, but if this is the complete list of potential options, then I'm okay with it. I agree. Yes. Mr. Galgos, Mr. Gisa, on this item. Trustee Galgos is in agreement with this as well. I agree as well. So before we get to the complicated one, let me just throw this, this one out. The, um, the commission did discuss moving the gravel driveway maintenance and construction standards to the building code rather than the zoning code. Uh, is there consensus on that as well? I think that makes a lot of sense. I, I think in part it, it's going to depend upon how we handle um, the non-conforming structures, um, what we do with, with dra existing gravel driveways, but, you know, as far as maintenance, how they need to be maintained, that seems clearly something that's appropriate for a building code as opposed to w what's allowed and what's not. I would agree. The question is, that, would it be in the building code and in the property maintenance code? Um, yes. So I think certain things would need to be added to the building code in regards to um, if we were to allow the new pea gravel driveways, creating what those standards are. And then as far as maintenance, then those standards would be under the property maintenance section of the code. I agree. 
Mr. Galgos and Mr. Gisa. Trustee Galgos has no objection to this. I agree. Thank you. Uh, so now we come to the, the item that we heard, uh, I thought, quite eloquent statements made on earlier this evening by many of our residents as to how we want to handle existing uh, crushed gravel driveways. The tr commission was asked to evaluate the pros and cons of allowing crushed gravel driveways and whether they should be required to be replaced at the time of the property is sold or simply grandfathered. Two of the commissioners uh, recommended that they should be replaced with one year of sale, and two commissioners said that they believe that they uh, could be grandfathered in, but they must meet the current maintenance standards. What are your thoughts? Mr. Bob? It, this was certainly the primary issue um, when we discussed this in the past, and, and let me preface this by saying I, I appreciate the work that the Planning and Zoning Commission put into this. I know we've sent it back and forth with them, and they spent a lot of time and did a very, very nice job with this. Um, at the, the last time we discussed it, I believe I asked the question, what, what are the pros and cons? What are, what, what I intended to ask, what I think I, I asked and it came out was, is there, what is the public interest in eliminating the gravel driveways? Is it pollution? Is it property values? Is it, um, is it public health, safety? And I did not see anywhere in the record any compelling reason that we would not grandfather them. Uh, in other words, um, you know, anytime we uh, impose a standard on our residents uh, and there's a cost to it, that cost has to be less than the impact on the public interest, on the welfare of the community. I don't see that here. Uh, I don't see a compelling reason why we as, as a local government need to uh, impose that cost on, on residents who have legal non-conforming driveways. So based on that, I am inclined to just grandfather these driveways. With the stipulation that they must be maintained per with, code. Of right? course, with the stipulation that they must be maintained. Like any, Ms. Evans, did you have something? Please. I did. I agree with Doug. Um, because I, just after listening to the community today, it was clear that it will create a hardship for seniors and people with disabilities. Um, and they, they will suffer a loss in the sale. Um, <clears throat> but there would still be out-of-pocket costs to bring their gravel driveways to code. So um, selling the house won't be a solve for that. I think maybe that they thought that that would be a solution for people. Like they wouldn't have to buy a new driveway. They could just put it off the new owners. But um, I, I understand the concern that it would affect their property value when they go to sell it. And um, <coughs> I don't really think that's fair and I don't, really, I'm not comfortable putting that on the residents. Uh, I do think they should be grandfathered um, with the requirement to bring their driveways up to the code that we, that we include in the ordinance. Mr. Hand? Yeah, just a, a clarification, uh, hopefully uh, Director Ab can, can, you know, we're sort of throwing around the term grandfathered and I want to make sure I understand what that means you know versus a you know when we talk about garages we talk about non-conforming structures mm -hmm. and then if you tear it down or do something you need to bring that into conformity what what are we what are we contemplating here with with sort of the distinction between those two concepts if there is one I think this would be again it would be similar it would be a non you know a non-conforming item that they would be allowed to maintain and we would have specific maintenance standards that they would have to be maintained to, um, but they would not be allowed to, say, expand the driveways. They couldn't go from a nine foot wide gravel driveway to a 10 foot wide gravel driveway, um, similar to the way we deal with um, existing non-conforming other driveways. So kind of grandfathering in that way. Um, and that, that's, it would be allowed to, to stay in perpetuity 
in, in, that, in that way. So. Okay, that, that, that's extremely helpful to me. I, I just want to echo Trustee Pollock's uh, statement that, you know, I appreciate everyone who came out today to give public comments. Uh, they were very compelling and really brought home for me uh, the potential economic hardship of, of either requiring removal uh, or, or putting a burden uh, that would uh, result in an adjustment to the sales price. Uh, I think the last thing we want to do as a board is to adopt a, a, a rule uh, that would make homes in, in Riverside uh, harder, harder to sell. Um, so I, I, that's it's sort of compelling towards me um, and also appreciate the nonconformity treatment that it's not something that will, will continue to grow. There's 35 nonconforming driveways. If they stay within their existing parameters, they can maintain them. I think moving those maintenance standards over to those other sections makes a lot of sense. Um, and, and once those are moved, the enforcement, I think, takes care of itself. Ms. Peters. Uh, yes, I've, I actually agree with everything the, my fellow trustees have said so far. I wanted to just point out one thing that um, struck me that we only have 35 of these, and obviously at one point we had a lot, lot more. So the market is working to address this issue. It's slower than maybe what would be considered through a code amendment or whatnot, but to me um, it's clearly working, and the market will drive it eventually to be smaller than 35. So I think that's about, you know, something we need to consider as well. Mr. Chisa? Um, yeah, I, 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 would, I would agree with Trustee Hannon. Mr. Gallagher? Uh, Trustee Gallagher wants to verify that we don't have any aprons that are made of gravel. Is that accurate? I'm sorry, I didn't understand any what? Aprons. Did you say aprons? There are no aprons in, in town that have gravel. There are a few, I believe they're in the list. So Ms. Apps says there are a few gravel aprons. Do you have a, do you have a concern about that? Well, I mean, if that does have a concern as far as some of the public works machines that take that into, uh, you know, the maintenance of those machines as well as into the sewer. But for the most part, I am okay with grandfathering gravel driveways, provided that the homeowners keep maintenance with it. Great, thank you. Ms. Ab, do you have any information on? I think we have one or two um, gravel um, or aprons, two. and that's obviously something that we don't want. Um, so hopefully that is something that, as we do perhaps road improvement projects or something, that that gets taken care of over time. Um, but yes, gravel driveways in the apron can definitely cause problems, especially with snow plowing, um, heavy rain events, and things like that. You're just more likely to be getting gravel into the roads and into the storm sewers or on, on sidewalks. So when we, do, when we do street renovations, the village does the aprons, right? Correct, yes. Okay, so we, so we would be replacing in those theory, we would over be, time. Yeah. Once okay. we get to those roads where that okay. those do exist, they'd be replaced at that point. So, Ms. Apt, have we have we gone through? Is there further guidance you need on on this? Um, no, I think that's good. I would say we did receive two comments. Um, oh. I can read those into the record if you'd Please. like uh, regarding Please. the matter. So, you received one from Carolyn McNally. And she states, Dear Village Board, I am responding to your proposed text amendment on gravel driveways as my apartment building located at 50 Lincoln Avenue has a gravel driveway. There are a couple of reasons that I am opposed to changing the gravel driveway for my property. First, the drainage in a gravel area into the earth is much better to the environment than allowing excess rain water to pour off of a paved surface into the storm drainage sewers overloading the system. The latest flooding in our area proved that. Second, the paved area would be too big and unappealing. It would look too commercial for the building. I have no problem with adding more gravel to even out the appearance, but I'm totally against paving the parking area. Thank you, Carolyn McNally. And then we also have one from uh, Thomas Holacek. He says, due to the COVID pandemic and the resulting restrictions, I'm following Sonia's suggestion and submitting my comments for this evening's meeting via email in hopes that they will be presented at the meeting. 
The documents I've read acknowledge that Riverside itself has two extensive gravel drive ups, one at Indian Gardens and one at Scout Cabin. Can the village in good conscience ask its residents to be compliant when the village itself falls out of compliance in a substantial way? Before any residents are cited for noncompliance, the village itself needs to correct these noncompliant areas first. One of the major arguments against gravel driveways is that they are not permeable to water. Later, it is stated that if gravel driveways are allowed, they must be kept free of weeds. How can gravel driveways be non-permeable to water, yet still have weeds? This is a contradiction. There are several properties with gravel driveways that have still been omitted from the updated list. There are many properties in Riverside which have gravel in their backyards, hidden and behind bushes, adjacent to patios, adjacent to driveways, etc. These are not being addressed. I will provide a few additional lots and addresses that are omitted from the list, yet are substantially out of compliance. And he lists uh, 178 Northgate, a partial gravel driveway discreetly covered by shredded cedar. 182 Northgate, a very long gravel driveway east of 182 Northgate that is well hidden. 450 Northgate Court with a very long driveway west of 450 Court. Northgate Court that also is not readily apparent. 460 Selborne, there is a small area adjacent to the driveway that is gravel. And the Pine Avenue Apartments across the street from the fire department, the entire parking lot driveway is gravel. Several others have loose gravel in their backyards adjacent to driveways and patios. Because gravel contains no petroleum products, because of remaining inconsistencies in the permeability argument, and because many more places are currently out of compliance, including the village, making enforcement a nightmare and an embarrassment for the village, my suggestion would be to grandfather in those properties that have gravel driveways and prohibit any new gravel driveways from being installed effective immediately. Thanks for your consideration. I would appreciate your acknowledgement that my comments have been given and discussed. Um, I would say um, the addresses that he cites here, these are all addresses um, that are adjacent to a public alley. So what he is seeing there is actually a gravel public alley that we have that these properties are adjacent to, with the exception of 178 Northgate. Um, and that is not a partial gravel driveway. We actually made them dirt over the gravel extension that they had. Um, they, were, they came in for a permit to replace their driveway and they wanted to widen it to that whole width and we said that they couldn't have a driveway that wide. Um, so they put some dirt and mulch in that area along their driveway. Thank you. And that was a couple of years ago. So that's, those are the two comments that we had received. Um, we received an additional comment, but she came in and gave her comments at the podium as well. So I would just like to echo what Trustee Pollock said. I mean, this, this has been floating around for quite a while now. There's been a lot of work uh, done by staff, done by our Planning and Zoning Commission, done, done by all of you in reviewing this and uh, repeatedly. Uh, I greatly appreciate the, the comments and, and the, the pursue, pursued interest of the residents who let us know their, their feelings. I thought they, they probably turned the, the tide on this by providing us their input. And I'm very gratified with the, with the result that we have reached. And I agree wholeheartedly with what, with what you have determined. So the next item, I need direction from Mr. Mars on this. The next item is an ordinance approving variations to allow an existing shared gravel driveway to be maintained. My understanding is, given the intent of this board to approve the text amendment that will allow and will grandfather gravel driveways in that this variation becomes moot. But we haven't yet voted on that right. text amendment. So how do we do this? How do we do this? Right, correct. So the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Commission on, on that particular variation request was that they be allowed to keep it, uh, keep their existing gravel driveway so long it was brought into conformance with the maintenance standards that we have in the code, which is exactly what you're allowing everybody with gravel driveways. You're proposing to allow everyone with gravel driveways to do that now. Uh, so assumedly, they they won't need to pursue this, but uh, uh, but I suggest that maybe Sonia reach out to them be between now and the next meeting and let them know where the board appears to be going with this and uh, see what kind of See, see, see what kind of action they want to take. If, if, if they say, well, if the board goes ahead and grandfathers everybody and, and, uh, and we're okay coming into the conform conformance with the maintenance standards, then they'll probably withdraw their request and we can terminate that one. So just from a technical standpoint, should we table this 
Yes, until you should the table. next meeting. You should, uh, well, continue. You, you don't, not really table. Just continue just both of them to the that. June 18th have. meeting, and uh, we'll resolve both of them at that time. Okay. Do I, do I have consensus to continue this to the next meeting, pending your vote yes. on the tax amendment? Are you okay with that, Trustee Gallegos and Trustee Gisa? Trustee Gallegos is fine with that. Okay, great. All right, well, thank you. So that takes care of that. Uh, we, we have no considerations this evening. Uh, we do have some new business that is a little heartbreaking for me, but uh, Trustee Peters, Thank would you, you like to? Thank you, President Sells. Um, I wanted to share with the general public uh, something that I've already shared with the board and the staff. Um, it's very bittersweet for me to say that the next board meeting is going to be my last. Um, my family has, uh, we've taken an opportunity to um, move to Southwest Michigan. Both my husband and I have um, some great opportunities there to pursue. So um, we're selling our home in Riverside, which just breaks my heart. Um, and I will save my uh, a fuller thanks for the next board meeting. Uh, but I just wanna say that it's truly been an honor to serve on this board and the previous board. And um, I've really enjoyed my time here. So. Um, if you have any questions, certainly feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. And I'm, I'm not quite sure we're going to accept this. <laughs> we'll have to have a discussion about this among the board. But uh, I, just like Liz said, we'll, we'll talk more about this at the next meeting and have an opportunity to say proper goodbyes to someone who has contributed so much to our village. So we'll, we'll deal with that next time. We have no need for an executive session this evening, so I'd ask for a motion and a second to adjourn. Uh, motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Motion by Mr. Pollock. A second. Second by Ms. Evans. Please call the roll. Trustee Hannon. Aye. Trustee Peters. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Galgos. Aye. Trustee Giza. Aye. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned. Stay safe and please take care of one another. Thank you. Good night.